Rob, a, a bit of a disappointing morning on the JSC considering the US closed higher last night. But we do, of course, have pressure on our miners this morning and news that China plans to restrict bank lending and that not being good for our commodity stocks. Yes, I think so. I think the lending uh, problem in China is uh, putting pressure on, uh, on the big miners. Uh, we saw production numbers come out of Billiton that were very good. Um, and the, the stock did end up higher in, in Australia in, in morning trade, in, in South African morning trade. But I think that what their concern was that there's going to be volatility in, this, uh, in the commodity prices and that tightening of, uh, of, of monetary policy in China uh, actually saying that they want banks to stop lending um, to, to foreign firms at the moment. Um, and, to, and, for, and, and locally is putting pressure uh, on how much uh, increase we're going to get from China in this, in this in environment. Rob, do you think this has been a knee-jerk reaction? Because we saw a similar reaction a couple of weeks ago uh, when China's central bank said it was going to raise the reserve requirements for banks. And of course, after a day or two, that seemed to, to filter away. Do you think we're seeing the same here? I think so. Obviously, with China, um, they're quite a wild beast in themselves. And what happens is they put out and they try to control that uh, economy, but the economy just carries on growing. So what happens is uh, they come out with tightening measures, but uh, the, the demand does not die down. So we have to wait and see, finally, if there's going to be figures that come out that say that actually these, these stimulus packages that they're putting in, they're going to cut down. And secondly, is demand actually going to slow down from their own economy? So they're trying, but it just doesn't seem to make a difference on, from demand locally in, in China. And of course, the real test will be to see when, when China does cut back on stimulus is whether the, the developed world, uh, the West, can actually pick up uh, on, on that demand. Do you think that's a likely scenario? Um, it'll be very interesting to see if China stops their stimulus packages and how the world will react to that. I think that currently um, the, the fundamentals are not improving as much as people thought, even though there are sparks of... Uh, and green shoots coming through the economies, they're not as good as they think. And these stimulus packages look like they're going to have to hold at least into the mid-year, if not for the whole of uh, 2010. Just your view on those BHP billets and production numbers out this morning. It, it does sound a few notes, notes of caution about stimulus being withdrawn, but it did seem quite upbeat overall, didn't it? It did. I think that in every one of their sectors they had uh, increase in production, except for coal. Um, but on the coal side, although they didn't produce more, they shipped more than they, they had record shipments of coal. So I think the coal side is looking very good and there's a lot of demand for coal. So I think that's something to look at uh, going forward. And I think uh, companies like Exara have been also upgraded due to that demand in coal. So take a look at the broad miners and see uh, w who's got very large deposits of coal. And I think that coal is something to look at going forward, um, besides just the iron ore and steel side. Of course, the broad miners weaker today, as you said, um, BHP Billiton down by 1.5%. Anglos was down about 2% at one stage this morning. Gold shares, though, not as badly affected. And of course, we do have the, the RAND weakening. So is that providing some support to the gold sector? I think it is uh, definitely helping the gold sector slightly. I think also um, gold is trading slightly away from the rest of the other commodities. Um, it's quite firm uh, still uh, today, and it is not trading the same as the commodities such as iron ore and steel, and it's more of a, as a hedge to inflation. We saw some inflation coming out of, uh, uh, out of the UK, which was much higher than expected, at 2.9%. We have had a bit of a switch into the financials today. We have um, financials and banks both up by close to 1%. Um, so, so quite good for our, our financial stocks. And um, among those, First Strand, Standard Bank, RMBH, all benefiting. Yes, definitely. I think that we've got uh, Bank of America and uh, is, I think Merrill Lynch that are coming through with numbers today. We had Citibank, whose numbers weren't great, fantastic yesterday, but it was as expected and not much worse than expected. So uh, that, was, that was quite a quite promising, but we're going to have to see about uh, Merrill Lynch and uh, Bank of America coming out today with their numbers. And that'll be a, a push, and it looks like people are expecting those numbers to be very good from them. And that's why the, re the financials are, are looking quite positive today. Now, we were chatting a little bit earlier, Rob, just about some of the pressure we're seeing on the local market today. You did point out that South Africa has been moved to underweight compared to some of the other BRIC countries. So could that also be impacting our market? I think yeah, we've, uh, we're on a technical level of 28,000 on the all share and we seem to be battling to get through there properly. So that's one of the, the criteria. And secondly, yes, uh, I think uh, Brazil, uh, Russia, India and China have been upgraded in, on the emerging market side. And South Africa, um, I think Turkey, uh, Istanbul, Poland, uh, Poland are down as, uh, have been downgraded. So I think there is a bit of profit taking coming in and people shifting their portfolios slightly. Okay, we had those retail sales figures coming out a short while ago, worse than expected, um, fell by 6.6% year on year in November at constant prices. Of course, the market was looking for a figure of around uh, minus 4.5 to minus 5%. So not good news for our retailers, is it? Yeah, no, very poor numbers. Um, 
you hope to think that people were keeping their, their, their buying back for December and we'll have a very big jump in December. But we're going to have to wait and see if those December numbers improve dramatically from, from the 6.6 decrease because it is a very weak number. And if that, co if that continues, the retailers are going to have a big problem going in the next the next six months. Mm -hmm. well, what was your feeling just given the, the trading updates we've had out of some of our big retailers over the past week or two? Do you think they had a, a reasonable Christmas? I think it looks like they, from a clothing side, Trueworth came out with quite good figures. If you take a look at MassMart, they're under pressure and the wholesale inside and durable goods side is, is looking relatively weak. Uh, ShopRite's figures were relatively good, so I think that you have to take the food retailers should be quite good and one or two of the, the clothing retailers, but you have to be very careful on which ones you pick. Uh, I think that uh, the food retailers, straight food retailers are the way to go still and uh, stay away from um, the wholesalers.